Do you ever start debugging something and going for what might be the hardest solution first? Well, I just did that on the Positron. This uh, Positron printer has been sitting idle. In fact, it's been in its box for like six months now because I started having some trouble. It wouldn't extrude. It basically it under extruded, meaning it was like squirting out less filament than it should. And uh, let me tell you the story of, of how that progressed. The first thing I noticed was the uh, the layer lines when it was doing its first layer were way too small. So the you know the first thing I did was I checked the Z height. Sometimes if you have the the bed smashed into the nozzle, that can cause that problem. That wasn't the issue. So the next step was I was like, well maybe the nozzle's clogged. So this is where the fun starts. I removed the nozzle and uh, noticed that it it did have some little crud on the bottom of it. So I tried cleaning it off. I put it back in. I didn't have a torque wrench. Now I do, but I didn't have one. So I wrenched it down with my little needle nose pliers and either did it too hard, I either did it too hard or too soft, uh, which caused more oozing, probably too soft. So then I was like, well, maybe I also wrecked this nozzle. So I put in a new nozzle, which I don't, I don't have my new nozzle sitting here, but let's say it was this one. It was actually shorter than this, which was the wrong size. That caused more oozing. And then I was like, I, I might have wrecked this thing completely. So I ordered a new hot end. This is a 90 degree hot end, which is very weird in 3D printing, uh, but that's what you have to do to have such a small profile print head. And this was like $80 plus shipping. So I immediately went to the expensive solution thinking this will definitely fix all my problems. Well, I got it in and I had it sitting in the box for six months because at that point I had put everything away and I was like, I'll use my other 3D printers for now. And the kids were disappointed because this one is so much more fun to watch. Uh, but eventually I, I pulled it out this past week. I replaced the nozzle or I, I replaced the whole hot end and put in a new nozzle. And that wasn't the problem. All of a sudden there was no filament at all coming out, which is not under extrusion, extrusion. That's no extrusion. I eventually realized it's this, the little PFT, PTFE tube. It's a Teflon tube. Uh, if you look closely at it on this side, you'll see that it's kind of crimped and squished. What had happened was a little piece of filament was stuck and wedged in here. And one time when I had pulled it out, I did a cold pull and I thought I was pulling it out uh, from from the inside of this and it would snap off like right there but it was actually snapped off inside of here and blocking everything and this was my problem for I don't know six months or however long and it was because one time it was hard to get this out so I used pliers to pull it out you can see the little little pliers marks and I yanked it but that created a little divot making this basically worthless <coughs> because it needs to have allow the filament to kind of glide through it so then the extruder is, you know, stripping on the filament. It's just, it was none of the other stuff. But of course I spent like three hours working on all this. I spent 80, 90 bucks with shipping. And uh, in the end, I needed just this like $10 worth of PTFE tubing. And uh, the, the big difference with this is this tubing is actually a little bit thicker walled. So the filament slides, well, it's supposed to slide easily, but on here there's a lot of resistance because of this. Anyway. The whole point of this video is just to say that the Positron was fun while it lasted and then it didn't uh, and it was all because of my own problem with this uh, tubing and it will be fun again now if I can fix this up. So I'm going to try doing that really quick and I bought this kit from Creality because it also comes with a P PTFE tube cutter that should cut it flush. Otherwise you could try using you know little snips or something but you're not going to get as flush of a cut and you want it as flush as possible. Well, here's the piece of filament. Sorry for the uh, disjointedness of this video, but that little piece of filament was inside the tube blocking everything. That was my whole problem. So start with the easy thing first. Anyway, I'm going to try fixing this. I just realized Teflon also resists uh, permanent marker. It's very good at uh, low friction. Oh, my finger does not resist permanent marker though. So I've never used one of these cutters. Hopefully this will be simple and easy.
That was simple. Okay. New tube. We'll see if this one works better. This is the moment of truth, after it warms up, of course. Is it going to extrude? Uh, yeah, a little bit more. A little bit came out. That's progress. There we go. Filament is coming out. All right, well, here goes nothing. <laughs> it's working now. It wasn't working. Things upside down. Yeah, so it's one is both upside down and one is sleep. It's a 50 50 shot. Now, is that something you did as a test? Yeah, that's a test print for this one. It tests overhangs and it tests the quality of the surface finish. So the print actually worked, but I did have one little problem that you can see here. Uh, it stopped extruding for a little bit, and I found out the reason for that is this little... Oh, well, there goes... There goes the top. Uh, the reason for that is I had, w when I was testing this all out, I had actually loosened the screw for the extruder that gives it tension. And apparently I loosened it enough that it just was not really gripping the filament at all. And so it stopped extruding for about five or six layers before I noticed. But uh, it's still attached. It's uh, barely hanging on. But there you go. You know, the key lesson that I've learned today is uh, don't don't start with the most expensive fix first. Try the simple things. And uh, also ask for help because the Positron community on Discord was very helpful with that. But now I have a working 3D printer here and I'll have some more fun printing upside down.